It's a way of life, it's a struggle sometimes But even dark nights, see the light just open your eyes If you can look beyond the filth, greeting all the lies Raise your head. Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Stubborn for Life with Urban Melody TV We're out here in the city of Santa Fe Springs at the Drug Lab With my special guest today, my boy, Sig Jack and baby Yes sir, what's, what's good, brother? What's going on, big Good to have you here, brother Thank you very much, man, I appreciate you taking the time I know I've seen you at a couple events yeah. uh, We've never really talked about meeting up or anything like that, but you know, I, I figured it was time for me to reach out to you and be able to sit down to this little quick interview yes, with you. Yes, sir. Man. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Now, you just got back from uh, Chile. State. Chile, yeah. right? Yeah, we're out there in Chile. We went and did three shows, um, Santiago, which we've done before, and uh, we also did Concepcion and Coquimbo. Nice, this time, nice. So. It was good. I, I like Chile. Yeah, Chilean people are nice. One of the man. best um, hip-hop scenes, I think, in Latin America. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Nice. Huge. Oh, wow. Especially Santiago. Nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. Now I wanna go way, way back. I was, you know, kind of reading up a little Making bit about me sound you, old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we're about the same age. You know, going based on on uh, what I read about you and all that, yeah. I think we're about the same age. So. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to drink. <laughs> That's all that matters, <laughs> That's right? It. So, um, eighty nine. Is that when you and your brother started rapping? Eighty nine is when um, is when my brother, I think. Um, jumped in the group 8990 before that i was rapping with uh with my boy jonjo okay who's the guy that actually got me to start rapping oh, okay we were like 13 years old and uh his uncle was a dj and he came with this uh with this uh single 12 inch single uh on vinyl of course it was a guy named chulito he was a rapper from miami okay and uh, and he was like Pretty much brought the record and he was like, check this out, because it's the first time we heard somebody rapping in Spanish. And he was like, I could rap better than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he did. He showed me, a, he, he pulled out a piece of paper and he showed me the rap. And uh, and I was blown away, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we were b-boying at the time. And, uh, you know, it was the first time that that I even thought about rapping. And then, he, you know, after he rapped me that, that verse, he was like, let's write a rap together. You know what I'm saying? So we did. We wrote a rap together. And then I was like, man, let me try this real quick. And... I just kept writing, you know. I was always, I was always into writing. You right. know what I'm saying? So, so you started doing music simply because you know the idea was brought to you. You liked it, and you're like, I'm gonna take it and run with it. Yeah, we were. I mean, you know, we were always into music. We, like I said, we were b-boying. I mean, we used to, we used to. Have, I used to have drums. They used to have guitars. We used to, you know, sit there and lip sync to to classic rock bands and all that in the living room. And, you know, we were always into the music thing. You know. Right. But that's the first time that I actually wrote a song, you know what I'm okay. saying? And I'm not even going to call it a song because it was more of just a rap or a verse. But um, that's what got my, pretty much sparked my interest to do what I'm doing now, you know? Okay. Now, you're from the Pico Union District, right? Yes, sir. Downtown Los Angeles. Based on your music, the surrounding and all that, is that what inspires you to yeah. write your music? Um, the Pico Union District was pretty much the muse for the first album you know and for for probably for everything that we've done since you know we recorded our first song because that's where we experienced you know everything in the first 18 years of our lives you know right. um, really experienced before we started getting out into the world and seeing other cities you know how it is in LA you, right. a lot of people don't get out of their block you know what I mean? <laughs> like, a lot of people that downtown LA have never even been to the beach you know yeah, what I'm saying it's true it's, it's and it's definitely it, true so it's it's you know for the first 18 years of our lives that's what we that's all we knew so that's pretty much what we wrote about you know what I'm saying and living in that neighborhood it's not just what happens in that neighborhood but what you hear about you know uh, current events in the world, politics, everything, right. you hear about it in the in the neighbor. You know, the the neighborhood kind of translates it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And you hear about it, but everything that we wrote about, yeah, it's it's pretty much based on life in the Pico Union District. Right now, when when Be Real approached you guys about being in your group cycle realm and all that, mm. what what did that mean to you? Um, it was a turning point in what in in for us in what we were doing at the time. You know. Uh, Be Real, at that time, it was the summer of 93. Um, I had just graduated high school, and we did a uh, we did a, a benefit at the Placita Olvera. Right, right. It was the Embodied Warfare benefit, 
And um, that's pretty much all we're doing, you know, the college circuit. We're doing a lot of fundraisers and a lot of stuff for Mecha and stuff like that. So um, Be Real happened to be there and uh, hit up a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Menace from the Latin Alliance, and he introduced us, you know what I'm saying? And Be Real pretty much was like, who are you guys uh, working with? We said, nobody. He's like, let me work with you guys. We were like, you can do whatever you want, so bro. You're on top right. of the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's when... Black Sunday, I think, had just came out or was about to come out. You know, it's insane in the brain, bro. That's their biggest mm -hmm. song. And, you know, for us, it was just like we used to roll around bumping Cypress Hill, you know? Right, right. So it was Be Real being half Mexican kind of made us believe that we could do something and contribute something good to his music and not just be a stereotypical, right, you right, know, right. Uh, Latin rapper. You know what I'm right. saying? And, and I want to get to that, you know, eventually get to that on how influential you are, you know, and all that. Because, because you are, you know, I see it. I see, I've been to, you know, where, where you perform, I see, you know, your fans, and uh, you have uh, quite a fan base, a loyal fan base, and, and you know, you're quite influential. Um, when you signed, um, like I said, I'd rather talk to you, because, yeah. uh, you know, I read, and I don't know if it's Columbia Records owned by Sony, or... Yeah, it was Rough House, distributed like, by Columbia and Sony. Okay. What did that mean to you when you guys signed, when you had that contract and, and you and your brother signed it? It made it official, you know, we were, it was, at that point it became um, more than just a hobby, you know, it right, became right. more than just, I mean, it, it's still, to this day, uh, music is my passion, and nothing changed with that aspect of it, but as far as it being me, you know, doing my passion as a hobby and me doing my passion as a job, that's where it changed, you know what I'm saying, but, right. um, being on Rough House and Be Real getting us that deal, Rough House, uh, opened a lot of doors for us because a machine like Sony can promote you around the world. You know right. what I'm saying? So instantaneously we were known around the world. You right. know what I'm saying? And um, we were being promoted in Germany, uh, uh, Russia, Spain, Italy, France, uh, the UK, you know, Canada, Australia, Latin America. We are being promoted in places that we never even thought that right. people would listen to to hip hop you know and and um now that we get the chance to tour a lot of those places it's a trip you know what i mean because right. you you realize damn like my music reached like some of these songs that these kids are singing along to right now i wrote in my <laughs> apartment you know what i'm saying right, right. Yeah, i wrote in my apartment like you know and, and it's like you know how how it got from my apartment uh, from this little four-track cassette recorder to these kids in Russia who have Psycho tattooed on their stomach right. and these kids in Germany that have, you know, Psycho Realm tattooed on their arms. It's right. it's a trip, you know what I'm saying? But that, I think that deal, that's what it did is it it propelled us into an, uh, a whole nother realm, you know what right. I mean? Now, I was, I was reading on it that you guys had conflicts with them and, and you guys were released from the label. Do you think that if you would have gone that route, continued with them, and kind of, let's say, like you said, they censored you, if mm -hmm. you would have said, okay, you know what, I'm going to abide by what you guys would want, do you think you'd still have such an influence? No. I think I'd be chasing whatever it is that they wanted me to create at the time. Their whole thing with was, um, we had a lot of support from Rough House. Joe the Butcher, uh, Joe the Butcher supported us. He put money out of his pocket to, to, you know, when we got our advance. You know what I'm saying? He added to our advance out of his own pocket. And um, Rough House gave us all the support, but Columbia wouldn't back him up. And what they wanted, because at the time, all the artists, the whole roster in Columbia that was hip-hop was already on the radio. Mm -hmm. The Fugees, Nas, Cypress. So they realized how much easier it was to just go to a radio station and pay somebody to play the record. You're you're reaching a bigger audience quicker, you know what I mean? And all you got to do is break bread. You don't right. have to do the legwork of street teams right. and street promotion, you know what I'm saying? So when they're asking us, where's your radio single, you know, and we're telling them Psycho City Blocks, here's the video, <laughs> they're like, well, that's too violent for right. people, you know what I mean? That's too violent. And it's like, well, you know, what do you want us to do? You want us to put a boombox in the video and, and wear glitter tuxedos and, and have five girls dancing behind us like is that gonna make the song less violent? you know what I, mean? right, I don't, right, I don't right. get it I thought it was a good creative video there was nothing violent about it you know right. uh, maybe uh, maybe they used the wrong word maybe they're trying to say the images are too strong 
Probably. You know, because of stereotypes and right. because of how we look. You know what I'm saying? Right. We weren't doing anything wrong in that video. We didn't have guns in that video. You know, my brother's iron increasing his dickies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's so violent Shaving about that? We're hopping low. We're hopping down. low riders. We, you know what I mean? Ain't, right. We ain't doing anything different than anybody else is doing the videos. We're sitting there, you know, rapping along to our song in front of the camera. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And right. because we didn't want to give them the radio single, um, they didn't really want to push us. So that's when we requested to be released. And we were like, you know, it was it was easy for us because we were signed to a production deal with through Be Real, and he signed his production company to Rough House. So it was easy for us to just send a fax and say we want to be released. Them signing it, and faxing it back out of the contract. You know what I mean? Many regrets from that. And that no, because that started our independent uh, career, and being independent was the best thing that ever happened to us. Right. You know? Now I know that Cycle Realm as a group, you know, it's gone through some tragedies mm -hmm. you know you guys took a a pretty big blow you know and uh the blow it, it wasn't just as a group but it was personal for yeah. you uh 1999 yeah. you know with the tragedy uh, to your brother yeah what did that do to you as an individual um as far as foreseeing your career you know your music career or the group cycle around um, when my brother got shot, it, it pretty much, you know, all music aside, you know what I'm saying, it was just something that we had to deal with as a family, and that's all I was worried about, you know, I was worried about my brother being alright, um, I wasn't really thinking about the music or any, any, you guys were about to with release that. We're, we had two albums worth yeah. of music, and, um, you know, just going through that whole thing with my brother, and making sure he was cool and then dealing with my feelings right. over the whole situation you know what I'm saying uh, uh, it was pretty tough you know what I'm saying I hit I, I was I was living in the in a bottle of whiskey probably for about three four years you know what I'm saying right. and uh, and it wasn't until my brother pretty much um, told me one day you know what are you doing you know what are you doing we have music you gotta release it you can't let what we built die out you know what I'm saying right right so he he was the one that kind of he's the one that snapped me out of it yeah okay. and it still took me a minute you know what I'm saying but I released the war story one and and then we released the war story two uh, a few years later you know what I'm saying and I think after a war story two is when I kind of started dipping out of it you know um, my brothers uh, cynic and crow from street platoon had a lot to do with it you know right, right. Um, they were I started touring with them, you know, we started touring together and, you know, uh, Street Platoon was doing a lot of shows and then the Psycho Room shows that got offered to me, they went on tour with me and um, I, had a, I had a support system with them, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the, with the whole, with the crew, you know what I'm saying, they were, they were there for me, so. Now, it, it, you know, a lot of people in the barrio and the com communities where you grew up in, I'm from South LA, you know, yeah. um, pretty much the same lifestyle, they go through similar situations you know like what can you tell them about overcoming tragedies like that you know about moving on with your life or just you know trying to find the strength to go day by day i just realize i mean there's nothing that you could say to console somebody or make them feel better at the moment but um time does heal wounds and the clock doesn't stop ticking you know what i'm saying so regardless if you want to sit there and wallow in your depression uh the world is going to keep spinning and people are going to keep walking in it. Right. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to be grateful for what you have rather than what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, man, right. for the tragedy itself, you know, I'm thankful that I still have my brother. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, I'm thankful that that uh, that he's still alive and he can still talk and he can still be creative and he can still let out his creativity. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And, and rather than, you know, it's, of course, it still makes me, uh, you know, it still makes me sad that he's in his condition, you right. know what I'm saying? But right. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on on every time he shows me a song or a beat or he comes with an idea and he, and the look on his face when he's excited that he has, you know what I mean? It's right, the same right. look that he had on his face when we were working together and he was walking. So I'm going to focus on the positive, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Now... Let's say that tragedy wouldn't have happened, you know, how do you think you as a person 
or the name Psycho Realm would have been more influential than it is now? Or Yeah, I don't like speculating because, you know, you'd have never know what would have happened, but right. of course, you know what I'm saying? I think that it would have <laughs> been something way bigger, you right. know what I'm saying? You're, 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 you're pretty much uh, chopping off a, a half of the group, you know? Right, right. right. So, you know, yeah. but we did what we 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 did what we could, and I think we did a pretty good job at keeping the name and the movement alive. Oh, know? without a doubt, to this day, yeah. man, to this day. Now, you know, I can see music from at least your music from three perspectives. Mm -hmm. You know, one, just what it is, music. You know, and just entertainment. A lot of artists out there, they do it for entertainment purposes. Yeah, going based on your lyrics we can take it two different ways you know uh, a lot of them are like you said what we see in current events you know uh, and how we translate it in mm -hmm. the audience and stuff like that would you say your message in some of your songs to the youth or to the people in the community and say screw the system rebel don't you know abide by their rules or is it your subliminal message saying go out there get educated play their game just play it better it's both, you know. It's it's both. Oh, of course, always educate yourself. Right. You know, education I think is the best thing that anybody can do for themselves. You know, it's worth more than gold. You know. Right. right. Um, but you know, it's not just you know. You don't want to be a rebel without a cause. You right. know what I'm saying? You don't want to just rebel to rebel. You don't want to just say fuck the cops just to say fuck the cops. You know what I'm saying? Right. There has to be a reason behind it, and you have to know what you're standing for and what you're fighting for. And that's where the education comes in, you know. Um, I think that you know, a lot of the times people get caught up in that, you know, that whole uh, screw the system, right. and they use it as an excuse, and they use it as a as a crutch, kind of like a, a scapegoat right. for why they're broke and why they're still in the hood and why they ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? Definitely. But but they're they. They won't go to school. They won't, you know. Do They're what pretty they much do. proving them right. The, they, uh, you They're you won't proving the system yeah, right. You won't you do know? what you got to do. What you got to do to get yours. You know, what I mean, no one's gonna hand it to you. Right. And that's what that's where kind of like the gray area is at. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. And, I always say that. You know, you know uh, in the barrios, you know, if the system doesn't care, then we need to care for ourselves. Of course. You know, they ain't gonna, the system ain't gonna feed us. We gotta feed ourselves, you know what I mean? But the system, then again, the system doesn't feed anybody but the people working for the system. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's it. The employees of the system get paid. <laughs> Everybody else, is, the system's just created as a, as pretty much a guideline, you know? Those are your boundaries. What you have to do is you have to work within those boundaries to get yours, you know? No one's telling you you can't make money. No one's telling you that you can't become a millionaire, you know what I mean? No one's telling you you can't do this and you can't do that, but... You know, when you're not this and you're not that and you're using the system as an excuse, it's right. kind of, you know, it's a it, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense either, you know. Right. So. That's cool, man. Now, where are you musically? You know, what are you working on? What are your current projects? What are you going to head to from here? We just dropped uh, Terror Tapes 2, Cynic and myself. That's the okay. second second uh, in the series of the Terror Tapes. Um, we pretty much, that's the first record in a while that we produce completely, you know? Um, I think the Six Symphonies album in 2005 was the last one. After that, we did Terror Tapes 1, which is more of a mixtape format, you know? And the reason we did that was because people knew what Psycho Realm was, but they didn't really know what it was, you know what I mean? They, right, knew, right. they knew about us, but they didn't know the music. So what we did, the concept for Terror Tapes 1 was, let me get your favorite rapper's beat and let me rap on it. And then you can compare me to your favorite rapper, you know what I mean? Right, so, yeah. when, so when Terror Tapes came out, a lot of people, it turned a lot of heads, you know what I mean? People were like, okay, these guys could really rap, you know? Right. For Terror Tapes 2, what we wanted to do is we wanted to show our production, you know? Right. Because we produce, you know? Um, Psycho Realm Records, you know, I produced, had some uh, a couple beats from TRT, uh, Crow from Street Platoon. The Street Platoon Records was all Cynic and Crow, you know what I'm saying? I did a join on there, TRT. Um, so we've always kind of pretty much produced our own music, so we wanted to showcase that on Terror Tapes too, on top of our rapping, you know what I'm saying? Nice. So that's the project that just came out, uh, came out in May of, uh, of this year, 2012. Uh, we got, you know, um, Joel Ortiz on that, uh, Sean Price, Merz, 
Chase Infinite. You know, we got a couple of features on that. And uh, it's doing good, man. It's, it created another touring cycle for us. You know, like I said, we just got back from Chile. We're about to go to Brazil. Uh, then we go to Mexico. And then we go do a Europe run, nice. you know, before Christmas. Because uh, I got to play Santa Claus to all my kids. That's <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, man. You have a lot of uh, fans, um, but you also have a lot of rap artists out there whether they're rap or different type of you know genre out there mm -hmm. how do they go about trying to get a hold of you or your group um you know to produce something together uh psychworldonline.com is the is the home base you know what i'm saying but if they want to hit me directly the social sites are always cool uh facebook works because they can send me a private message you know what i'm saying i don't really like to talk business or anything on publicly you know right, right so uh but a lot of people hit me up on the on the private message you know but the thing with the social sites is, you know, everybody's hitting you up for, you know, hey, uh, send me a beat. I want to rap on a beat, you know. And it's just like, ain't that <laughs> yeah. easy, you know, man, you know. Right. You, like, you, you tell, work for yours. Yeah, and they, tell, they, what, they do you do, what do you do for a living? I do construction. Come build me a room in my house for free. All right. Because, uh, you know, I like your work, homie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, definitely. People, people take this as a, you know, you know, nowadays um, with the internet and all that, the value of music is kind of disappearing you know what i'm saying so people right. think that it's all they get your songs for free they can get your verse for free or they can get a beat from you for right. free and it's like nah, i mean this we we put our time into this this is our job you know what i mean and, and and i appreciate and shout out to everybody out there that supports the music you know what i'm saying that you know buys the albums and 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 uh goes to the show and cops a t-shirt or just goes to the show period you know because that allows us to keep doing what we do, you right. know what I'm saying? And that's why I always tell the people is, if you like an artist, support what they do because you, they're going to keep doing what you like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Otherwise, exactly. you're going to keep, you're going to be listening to nothing but, you know, the pop music right. that's on the radio, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't like that, so right. support your local psycho. You know? <laughs> and do you want to tell your fans, anyone out there, any special shout-outs you want? Man, I, I just want to, you know... Once again, like I said, just much love to the Six Side Army. Uh, they're always they're always there, you right, know, right. supporting, and we appreciate it. We see you guys, you know. And and one thing of, that people don't understand is, everybody asks, how come you know, how come you know the cycles are so loyal to your music? And I think it's because we're just as loyal to them. You know what I'm right. saying? We continue to bring music that they like and they want to hear. You know. Right. Um, and we haven't pretty we haven't sold out the movement, you know what I'm saying? For for we haven't took the easy way out, you know what I'm saying? So we're here in, in the trenches with them, and and uh, we appreciate the support, you know. Much love to the SSA. All right, man. I just want to thank you for taking time, you know, sitting down with me. Like I said, I know you're busy. You know, I've seen you around a couple of times, and uh, I know I had to go through, uh, you know, your manager or someone. Uh, Alexis. Today. Alexis. Shout to, out to uh, Latina Beats. Yeah. All right to uh, book this interview, and and I appreciate it, man. Yeah, you know, do you have any music videos coming up? Uh, um, yeah, we're about to. We just shot one for. We just shot two videos for Terror Tapes. One called "Show You a Rock." The other one's called "I'm Gone," and um, we'll probably shoot a couple more. You know, what I mean, we got a couple Spanish tracks on there that I want to nice. shoot videos for, and um, just be looking out for that, man. Psychoromonline.com, and uh, the social sites are pretty much on there. You know, what I'm saying right. so. All right. Get in touch. There you go. Yes, sir. Say Jack in Stone for Life Urban Melody TV. Appreciate your time, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's a way of life. They sing a double for life. They sing a double for life. They sing a double for life.